Good day everyone. My name is Ariel Paolo V. Ligali, a teacher intern under Mrs. Marietta B. Pagaduan in College of Education. Today, we will be learning about meal planning. So what is meal planning? Meal planning is the process of combining the right food items in the right amount. This has become a cooperative effort of almost all members of the family, but the mother usually does this. Meal planning is not just combining any kind of food that we like to eat in a meal. Now we need also to consider the nutrients we can get from the food, from that food, the combination of food and the right amount. So the question is, are we getting the right nutrients that our bodies needed? Now in the family, it's very important that the mother should know how to cook. So to all men here, look for a woman not just good looking but also good at cooking. And to all women, also look for a man who knows how to cook or maybe can assist and help you to decide and prepare the meal. Now, meal planning also includes decision making and programming at the start before going on market. Now from the word itself, meal uh, planning. Plan first and think about what to buy for the whole week before going to the market. Now this will help to minimize the time consumption and economize the foods that will be bought. Meal planning is also important in preparing foods that we should prepare nutritious and health foods that will satisfy the needs of each member in the family. So let's proceed to the benefits of meal planning. Now these are the benefits of doing meal planning in the family. The first one is ensures proper vegetation nutrition. So you can choose a food that contains nutri nutrients that uh, the family, your family needed or maybe yourself your body needed. The next benefit is assure balance between major nutrients. So be wise in balancing between the major and the minor nutrients. Right? These are the benefits that we can gain in practicing or exercising meal planning. That the third benefit is reduces shopping time. No, instead of going out daily to buy food to cook for the family we can minimize and save time and, and spend it with our family and the next benefit is save money now yes we can save money this is the one good benefits of doing meal planning we can save money because we cannot uh, we will not go out daily we can save money from transportation now this Four is uh, are the some uh, some benefits that we can get in exercising or, do, or doing meal planning. Actually, there's a lot more when you do or uh, when you when you watch in the YouTube or in the Google search. There's there's a lot of benefits that we can gain uh, we can get in doing meal planning. But I only share four uh, today. Next is, what are the factors to consider in meal planning? The first factor we need to consider in meal planning is the food budget. Food budget is refers to the cost or amount of money needed for the food to be prepared. And it is one way in doing that is to choose the food that are in season. So what are the food that are in season? I, I have here in my slides the fruits and veggies. When are they in season? So in springtime, spring season, uh, in mid-March and mid-June, these are the fruits and vegetables that in season. It means that in springtime, it's best time to buy this fruits and vegetables for example the 
veggies, the strawberries, the lettuce. The prices of these fruits and vegetables is not costly. You can buy more or a lot for your family or even you can help from your neighbor. You can give some to your neighbor or to those who are in need of what are the example of the fruits and vegetables that in, uh, in springtime season is the, uh, avocados, melons, peaches. No? We need to remember the uh, example of fruits and vegetables in spring season. And another example is in the summer season. In summer season is around mid-June to mid-September. So what are the examples of vegetables and fruits in summer season the apples also the avocados also tomatoes watermelon no. when summer came do not miss to buy uh, these vegetables and fruits because it's not expensive we can also give to our uh, neighbor and also to our families and next one is in springtime around mid September to mid December these are the fruits and vegetables that are in season of autumn the cauliflower or things like that and in the winter time also around uh, mid December to mid March uh, these are the example of the fruits and vegetables in winter season the dates the pineapple the pears and pomelos and last picture is the year round uh, the year round fruits is the bananas and the passion fruits now these are these are some example of vegetables and fruits that are in season so when springtime came when autumn came when winter came or summer came do not forget those examples that i have given to you or shown to you in the presentations you know it can help us to save money it can also help us in and help others by giving them fruit or fruits and vegetables to its season time. Next one, the second factor that we need to consider in meal planning is nutritional content. Nutritional content is the, the use the basic of food group as your pattern. So maybe maybe you have noticed this this picture on the side of the food that we have found ourselves in the groceries or in the stores. Food, uh, these nutritional facts. What is this for? And this is to inform each one of us, the buyer, the nutrients that we can get from that food or from that stuff. Now each food has nutritional content, as you can see here in the. Part in the presentation is calories 300 total fat is per gram 6% saturated fat no it is to inform us that uh, the food that we're eating it give us this kind of nutrients uh, in our body so each food has nutritional content for us to know what nutritional we can gain after eating the third factors that we need to consider in meal planning is palatability of food. Palatability of food is avoiding overcooking, especially vegetables. Now, in some vegetables and fruits, you know that nutrients mostly found in the skin, and vegetables are better to eat raw or have cooked. The next factors is home food production. What is home food production? Home food production is the container reachable garden. To avoid spending a lot of money, try to make a little garden in your backyard or in your garden and plant some vegetables and fruits like uh, okra, pet chai, or papaya. Now start cleaning your backyard or your garden and start cultivating soil, plant the seed, and water you need. By simply doing this in a short time, in daily, by cleaning your garden and watering your plants, no, I, in just two weeks, you can harvest fresh vegetables 
or even fruits from your own garden. In this way, if there is an emergency that we are lacking of vegetables, we can get immediately from our own garden or backyard from our own plants and vegetables. The next factors we need to consider is family culture preferences. Be sure that it varies every family, that the meal is good for each member of the family because there are some members of the family that the, uh, they don't like the food, some food they don't, uh, they, are, they are not used to eat this one because maybe they have allergy and eat that one and become, you know, their body become itchy. So make sure that the meal is good for everyone and each member of your family. So let's proceed to the meal pattern. In planning a menu, an outline of food groups to be included in each meal is usually followed. And use the basic food groups in making a menu. And here are the sample meal patterns for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can also have your own pattern of uh, meal in daily life. In daily. So in here, I have here in my screen the meal pattern. You know, the entry main dish, vegetable dish in row one, rice cereal, fruits, side dish, salad, dessert, and beverages. This is, uh, this is the example meal pattern. And the breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, in breakfast, it's, it's a no-no that in breakfast we eat spaghetti, in lunch we eat pancit, and dinner we eat uh, macaroni. No, it's not, uh, it's not advisable to eat or to have that kind of uh, meal in a day because spaghetti pancit is macaroni, it's more on carbohydrate and too much carbohydrate is not good to our body. And we can, become sick, our body would become shut down for that uh, for unknown reason. So we it's important to have a good uh, a balanced meal in a day. So so it's also important to eat your breakfast because a healthy breakfast refuels your body jumpstart your day and may even benefit your overall health. Now, let us not don't skip uh, our important meal, the breakfast, because it refuels our body for the whole day. Now, most students uh, here in AUP, including me, sometimes skip or miss uh, my breakfast for the reason of waking up late. So let us not Breakfast gives us a chance to start each day with a healthy and nutritious meal. So according to the uh, research that adult who reports regularly eating a healthy breakfast are more likely to eat more vitamins and minerals, control their weight, control their sugar levels, and perform better at work. Also, children who regularly eat a healthy breakfast are more likely to meet daily nutrient requirements, be at a healthy body weight, be able to concentrate, and miss fewer days of school. Indeed, it is very essential to, uh, uh, to regularly eat breakfast food. I remember my elementary days that our first subject teacher asked, his students or as has who among us who did not eat yet their breakfast or skip uh, breakfast this morning because they know that it's very important to eat your breakfast in a day because uh, it refuels your body and the food we consume or eat will become our energy for the rest of the day so in lunch, we need also to eat lunch because eating in the middle of the day, several hours after breakfast, 
re-energize our body and can raise blood sugar levels when focus and concentration are flagging. If we are feeling sluggish or eating even a small lunch, can renew our energy and help you feel fresh and ready to take on the next of our tasks. Also, eating lunch keeps our metabolism active, especially if we have a moderately sized meal and a snack before and after work. According to Dr. Court Home, the Center of Human Nutrition, the Director of Huntington Medical Foundation, extended periods of starvation between large meals create gaps which keep the metabolism from staying active. Next, dinner. You might have heard the saying, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. But dinner is equally important. Regardless of the amount of food you consume in the day, you should never skip dinner. The meal timing strategy is set following your bodily functions. You should not trickle with it. It is important to have a balanced meal daily because it helps us to live longer and to have a healthy body. Next, pointers of ensure meal planning success. It is often a criticism of vegetarian food that it is difficult to know what to serve with what. It is not so difficult with meat and to vegetables, but when it is meat-free, it is more complex. So the following are some tips to ensure meal planning success. The first one is avoid preparing foods of the same food group in one week. No such as starches, fancy spaghetti and rice, or protein, baked beans, gluten, menudo, and fried tofu. Now this food is rich in carbohydrates and too many carbs are not good for our body. Now we need also to avoid to prepare same food, the same nutrients in one meal because it's, it is a no-no or not advisable in our body. The next one is have a good balance between soft and solid foods. No, a meal of our scaldo, ginataang, kamote, and macaroni soup is far too soft. Likewise, a meal of fried tokwa, kasitbinon, and kunchinta is interruptly dry. Next is avoid preparing highly seasoned food at one meal. Two or three kinds are enough. Four. Serve only a few varieties of food at one meal. Two or three kinds of food are enough. It's not advisable to cook a lot of clients unless there are special events. Prepare only enough for the family. The fifth one is consider the cost of the food. Food not in season is always more expensive and there is enough variety among the unexpected ones. The next one is observe food color harmony as much as possible. The, se the seventh one is plan of substantial breakfast. A good diet for the day begins with a good breakfast. That's right my friend. No, a good diet for the day begins with a good breakfast. The body is in greater need of food than at any other time. If one is not hungry at breakfast, the cause should not be sought out and corrected. The last one that I will be sharing to you is supper should consist of the simplest meal of the day. If a hearty meal is planned, it should be served as early as possible. In conclusion, meal planning can help you to save money and time. Meal planning also can help you to eat healthier food, reduce mealtime stress, and this is not difficult to do. When 
when you are used to it, eh, to do meal planning in your family, you can also share it to your friends. And you will realize that doing this is very helpful in your family. So according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, Therefore, whether, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Our body is the temple of God. So whatever we put inside our body, sees to it that it will nourish our body. By taking care of ourselves and eating what is right is a way of glorifying God. So, so thank you for listening. And I hope that you learn something for our topic today, meal planning. God bless and God bless also in doing meal planning for your family and for your future family. Bye-bye!